Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Happy New Year. Happy and New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year as well. I haven't seen you in a little while. I know. Good to see you. Good to see you. How's your year going so far? So far, so good. <laughs> good. Uh, one day down. Yeah. How about you? Not bad. Not good. bad. Uh, I understand, Mike, we have some rain in the forecast. My question is, will it help with the mountain cedar levels. Oh my goodness gracious. I, uh, yeah, mountain cedar is just ridiculous out there. Yes, it will tend to get a little bit out of, a little bit of it out of the atmosphere. But I mean, when you see, you know, you've seen some of the pictures, I'm gonna show you this is coming up a little bit later on where it looks like that fog kind of hanging out there with that mountain cedar. Anyway, we're at 47 degrees right now, almost a kind of a dampish chill. There's no rain showing up on radar for the time being, but we will see some developing later on this morning. 50 degrees for high temperature, so basically temperatures aren't going to be moving throughout the course of the day. The aquifer on yesterday's reading, it did go down one tenth of a foot. All right, I'm going to switch the graphic. Here we go. Mountain Cedar 23,800. By the way, molds on the low side. So yeah, hopefully something washes a little bit of that out there, but it's not going to be a heck of a lot of rain today. It'll be just kind of consistent light rain. Some of the temperatures around the area are very consistent. Thanks to the cloud cover. Everybody's in the forties. We are on average five degrees, six degrees above the normal low right now, which is low forties here in town. 51 Castroville 49 right now at Stinson. So coolish. Eh, not cold, but just kind of coolish out there. Uh, a couple of showers are going to start to develop as we go on this morning. And then throughout the course of the afternoon, we are going to see more scattered showers around here. And again, staying kind of chilly 50 and it's that damp chill with the rain out there. Then the next uh, couple of days, it'll stay on the cool side. We'll see some sunshine tomorrow afternoon, a little more early on Thursday. Then clouds move back in here very quickly. Another chance of rain by Friday and over the weekend we're gonna have more sunshine. It's gonna be really warm looking at mid and upper 60s and even mid 70s by the start of next week. We get it all sorted out. Got another rain chance down the road in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez. Good morning, sir. Happy yeah, New good Year. morning, Mike, and good morning to all our viewers out there. Happy New Year as we take you outside trans guide traffic cameras and you can see that we got some Smooth sailing to start out our work week. Of course, uh, some people, you know, getting back to work today and stuff. We're going to get school going later on uh, the rest of this week as well. But taking you outside here real quick, we have Loop 410 at Callahan. Traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. Loop 410 at McCullough, same situation there as well. Uh, taking a look at our big map here, had uh, no major things overnight, but we do have a crash that's starting to clear out here. Uh, 410, these are the eastbound lanes at Cherry Ridge. So this is going to be right before you get to uh, Vance Jackson Road. But I just saw the camera a little while ago and it looks like Texas has go ahead and has uh, went ahead and cleared that one out. So that is some good news if you are headed out for any reason right now during the five o'clock hour. 1604 Petranco traffic moving pretty good in this area here. So maybe some people getting a little bit of a later start, kind of slow going to start uh, your work week if that's the case. But uh, we'll continue to follow the roads and give you any more updates as it become available. Mark and Stephanie back to you guys. RJ, thank you. New this morning, a crash turns into a shooting overnight. San Antonio police say it happened around 930 last night in the 4100 block of Terran Road. That's on the east side near Roland Avenue. Police say a man driving a truck was going too fast around a curve when he crashed into a fence and tree. SAPD says that's when someone in a black SUV pulled up to the crash and started arguing the driver and passenger in the truck. Police say when the SUV driver heard sirens, he'd shot the driver of the truck in the chest, got back in his vehicle and drove off. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. A 21 year old man is hoping for better luck in the new year. Police say 2023 ended with him jumping through the window of his own vehicle to stop would be car thief who is accused of pulling a gun on him. Now, San Antonio police say that the man was outside a home in the 1600 block of Socorro Street near Highway 281 and Loop 410. He told police he found someone sitting in the driver's seat and jumped through the front passenger window, which was open. Police say the suspect pressed the accelerator and ended up crashing the vehicle through a fence at the home. Instead of taking off, investigators say he pointed a gun at the victim's head. The victim pushed the gun away, got a knife from his vehicle, and cut the suspect, who then ran off. Officers, along with the police helicopter, searched for the suspect, but they were unable to find him. Police are still looking for him. Today marks one week since Savannah Soto, Matthew Guetta, and their unborn child were found dead inside a car 
at an apartment complex on San Antonio's northwest side. The investigation into their deaths continues. Following the discovery of their bodies, police released this security video of the parking lot. The video shows two people that detectives are describing as people of interest in the case. If you know something, call the SAPD Homicide Detectives at 210-207-7674. You can remain anonymous. The video and the number to call is posted on our website at ksat.com. Meanwhile, a vigil was held yesterday for 22-year-old Matthew Guetta. John Paul Barajas was there and takes us through the emotional moments. Jesus, my pain is so deep, my anger is fierce, and my fear is crippling. As we grieve Savannah, baby Fabian, and Matthew. Dozens of friends, family, and strangers gathered at Woodlawn Lake to pray, mourn, and show support at a vigil for 22-year-old Matthew Guerra. He and his 18-year-old pregnant girlfriend, Savannah Soto, were killed just before Christmas and right before they were set to have their baby boy. He thought that I'd be babysitting Fabian for New Year's or something. Like, I, me and Savannah talked about so many things we had planned for Fabian. Plans to make new memories with a grandchild have been ripped away from both the Guerras and Sotos. Now their families are forever linked by tragedy as they seek justice in an ongoing capital murder investigation. I love you, Matthew. I love Savannah. I love Fabian. Through the wave of emotions, hugs, and tears, there were some smiles. Remembering the lives lost and the good times they shared. The overwhelming message from those in attendance said best by Matthew's dad, Gabriel. I miss him and uh, that uh, you know I'm going to be his voice and, and this time and that um, you know we're never going to forget him and Fabian and Savannah and that the love they had for each other. John Paul Barajas, KSET 12 News. Matthew Guetta will be laid to rest next week. His family told us a public viewing is set for Monday evening, January 8th at Mission Park Funeral Home on Southeast Military Drive. The viewing will be that evening from 5.30 to 8 p.m. As for Savannah Soto, services are still pending. The FBI and police in Rochester, New York, are investigating whether a car crash early New Year's Day may have thwarted a terror attack. The fiery crash happened in the early morning hours outside the Kodak Center, where a thousand people were coming out of a concert. Two people were killed, five others injured after a Ford Expedition struck a Mitsubishi Outlander that was exiting a parking lot near the Kodak Center complex. The collision caused an explosion and large blaze that took the fire department more than an hour to extinguish. Once the flames were doused, firefighters located at least a dozen gasoline canisters in and around the expedition. That prompted police to bring in an arson team and alert the FBI. For weeks, police around the country have been on heightened alert out of concern. The war in the Middle East could lead to violence here at home. A potential escalation this morning in the Red Sea where Iran-backed Houthi rebels have been attacking commercial ships in a show of support for Hamas in the war with Israel. An Iranian warship was reportedly sailed into the region just a day after U.S. forces killed several Houthi rebels. The Pentagon says they were trying to board a merchant vessel when they fired at two U.S. Navy helicopters. The helicopters returned fire, killing 10 rebel fighters. It comes as Israel now plans to withdraw some troops from Gaza in a shift to more targeted operations against Hamas in the coming months. Now to the race for president with the Iowa caucuses just days away. And now another poll is showing good news for former President Trump. As ABC's Rihanna and Ali reports on how the candidates are getting ready for the next big push in 2024. This morning, a new poll shows President Biden losing ground to former President Trump among Latinos and younger voters. The USA Today Suffolk University survey shows Trump with a 39 percent support among the Latino demographic compared to Biden's 34 percent. Back in 2020, Biden got 65 percent support from Latino voters. Concerns about the economy and the border have weighed on voters. The poll also finds Trump now leading Biden among voters under age 30. 35, many concerned about climate change and the Middle East. Are you ready to work hard over these next two weeks so that we win the Iowa caucus? Meanwhile, the Republican primary candidates are making their final push, with the Iowa caucuses now less than two weeks away. Trump is leading in Iowa by more than 30 points. Less than three points separate Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Donald Trump is running on his issues 
Nikki Haley is running on her donors' issues. I'm the only one running on your issues. DeSantis attacking Haley after her recent rise in the polls, gaining ground on Trump in New Hampshire. That state's Republican governor, who endorsed Haley, is now calling on Chris Christie to drop out to give Haley a better chance against Trump. Chris Christie's a friend, but his race is at an absolute dead end. This is a two-person race, right? It's between Trump and Nikki Haley. But the former New Jersey governor is not backing down, recently launching a seven-figure ad campaign. Some people say I should drop out of this race. Really? I'm the only one saying Donald Trump is a liar. New Hampshire, it's up to you. The results from the Iowa caucuses will not be known until early March on Super Tuesday. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. The Texas Longhorns couldn't get the big finish they needed last night against the Washington Huskies in the Sugar Bowl. The game wasn't over till around midnight. The Huskies managed to hold off the Longhorns for a final score, 37-31. Washington's quarterback. There's no doubt spring just got stronger. 430 yards, so now the Washington Huskies will face the Wolverines to see who will reign supreme in the 2024 national title game played on Man Monday, January 8th over in Houston. All right, so you're seeing Brahma's videos now. Spring football uh, in San Antonio is here to stay. The Brahma's will play their second season at the Dome after a merger with the USFL and the XFL created the United Football League, the UFL. Brahmas are one of the four XFL teams that survived the merger, along with four USFL teams. They'll be split into two conferences, and the Brahmas have a new head coach. Former Cowboys head coach Wade Phillips will be taking the reins here in San Antonio. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his ex-wife UFL partner Danny Garcia will still be a part of the organization as co-owners. Tickets will go on sale soon. Our San Antonio Spurs back in action tonight in Memphis taking on the Grizzlies. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. The Spurs will look to avoid a three-game losing streak. Thursday, the Spurs return home to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. And for the first time in the new year, I like to say, yeah, go, go Spurs, Spurs, go. go. Yeah, 2024. Right. 2024, <laughs> 512, 47 degrees. And just ahead, how you can take advantage of a big discount on one of the most popular VR headsets. And next, it's the nine-month cruise captivating social media. We'll take a look at what passengers are enjoying and, more importantly, how much they're paying to take this trip of a lifetime. And looking out there with live cam, it's a very cold morning to start your new year if you're getting back to work or back to school for some of you today. 47 and cold. Take a jacket. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 515. A nine-month cruise has turned into a viral sensation with people following passengers on social media and treating the trip like reality television. ABC's Victor Akendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the nine-month cruise captivating social media. Welcome home for nine months. Royal Caribbean calling it the ultimate world cruise. I've been practicing the next part. I think I have it down. It's Rio. Rio. <laughs> and while those on board are paying up to $117,000 for the 274 night adventure, countless vacation voyeurs are enjoying the onboard drama for free with nearly 140 million views and counting on TikTok. They're enjoying coming along for the trip. Following the adventures of guests like <laughs> Joe and Audrey Martucci, who have been dubbed as the ship's mom and dad. They go, you make me feel like part of a family again. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more behind the scenes details from the ship. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. 517, 47 degrees. Let's look out there with Trans Sky this morning, looking over at I-37 at Jones Avenue. Also, I-37 and Hackberry, things are moving early this morning, so if you want to get somewhere right now is the time to do it. We'll be right back. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Paul. You don't want to ride with Paul. Or Sarah. Not today, anyway. And you don't want a rate based on Ben. He's got some important business to take care of. Why would you pay a rate based on anyone else? With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. 
Bye bye cough. Later chest congestion. Hello, 12 hours of relief. 12 hours? Not coughing? Hashtag still not coughing? Mucin XDM gives you 12 hours of relief from chest congestion in any type of cough, day or night. Mucin XDM. Ah! It's comeback season. Nature's bounty hair growth. Help grow thicker, fuller hair with just one capsule a day of advanced hair complex. Conquer hair thinning. And fall in love with your hair all over again. Only from Nature's Bounty. Welcome back. Back to the grind. Back to to reality here. Can I um, I please just say... I'm very excited about the Michigan victory yesterday. So sorry, <laughs> sorry. I mean, that's Congrats. why I'm wearing the kind of maize and blue. Is that what you yeah. picked? Got my, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And got my those okay, the main from yeah. Yeah. football nice. yeah. there. It was a so close yeah, game at the end. Yeah, yeah. it was a, yeah. an ugly game, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So some very dramatic finishes there for oh, Michigan right. and also for, unfortunately Utah. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And good season, yeah, Steph. And yeah, so, it was a good season. I didn't. I mean, I went to bed. It was 14-14. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you know. <laughs> they didn't. Longhorns did not score first, and I was like, I don't know. That's yeah, a good give, sign. Give a good vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the refs on Saturday night. Oh boy. Oh. Yeah, that was <laughs> definitely a interesting. Bit of a spot. What we do know is uh, um, we have a traffic update. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know what, guys? I wanted to start here because uh, this, of course, this is my, one of my favorite trans guys shots, but. You know, New Year's Eve, uh, my first time I was now living in the downtown area, I didn't realize like the haze from the fireworks just yeah. completely covers up the Tower of the Americas. <laughs> San Antonio, yes. they do uh, love themselves a good uh, fireworks show. So uh, some interesting videos that we also have on our website, and I think also KSAT Connect, some good stuff there. But uh, as far as traffic, guys, things looking pretty good out there as we get you on the rotating shot right now. Looking at uh, 281 at San Pedro, we had traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. 98 Nogalitos, traffic moving pretty smooth there as well. Again, a lot of people getting back to work today, uh, but I think most of the major school districts, I think they still have one more uh, student holiday, so uh, they may be getting back to school later on this week. As we take a look at our maps right now, we have officially cleared out that crash there. Eastbound lanes at 410 and Vance Jackson, Cherry Ridge. Wasn't really causing any significant delays, but something that our drivers in that area had to just kind of keep an eye out on. Uh, Everything else is looking pretty good, though, as we mentioned. Want to give you a quick look at some gas prices right now as we start the new year. We see we're at 270 right now. Uh, here in the San Antonio area. Interesting, a little bit higher than Texas. We're usually on the other end of that, and as far as the average gas price across the country, are obviously still a little bit lower than what we're seeing in the rest of the uh, 50 states here. So it might be a good time to go fill up, get ready for the work week, and uh, as we see right, one more shot here, Loop 14 Callahan, traffic moving pretty good there as well. All right, Mike, how are things looking outside uh, on this Tuesday morning? Well, lots of clouds. You saw in that one picture looking at the Tower of the Americas. Yesterday, of course, beautiful day, first sunset, of the new year right over Woodlawn Lake. Thank you very much for that one, Mr. McClellan. But then uh, here's another shot. You can see the clouds off there in the distance. Right now, the roads are dry for the most part. We are going to start to see a couple of showers developing as the the morning rolls on, maybe clipping kind of the the tail end of the morning commute. Consistent temperatures, 40s. We are on average five, six degrees above normal, normal low being 41 degrees right now. And thanks to the cloud cover, that's kind of acting like a bit of a blanket. Here's a computer model. And again, by eight o'clock this morning, a couple of showers primarily off to the west will continue to develop. And again, here in town, I think we're going to miss any of the, uh, the light rain for the morning commute afternoon, different situation. And then again, throughout the rest of the morning, going into almost noontime, we'll have a couple of these showers showing up around here, just sort of scattered around the area and they start to pick up a little bit more. A couple of decent uh, downpours just here and there. I mean, this is not going to be a widespread huge rain event. Take anything we can get. Obviously, this is going to be the situation in through dinner time then and then also early evening hours it starts to work its way on out of here. As far as temperatures, they're not going to be going anywhere. We're going to be mid 40s, pretty much steady all morning long. Rain chances begin to pick up as the morning rolls into the afternoon and then we top off at 50. So we're going to be a good anywhere from 10, 12, almost to 15 degrees below normal. Jump ahead then to the end of the week and Thursday night, another chance of rain overnight into Friday. And then that looks like it's going to kind of scooch on out of here fairly quickly. That's going to set us up for a nice looking weekend. We are going to be on the cool side for the next few days to start off the new year as we were yesterday. Today is going to be the coolest day 50. That's it. If indeed we do hit 50 degrees and it's going to be sort of that dampish chill as well with some of those showers out there. 
and then we are going to be getting up to 60 tomorrow. More sunshine in the uh, afternoon, starting off with sunshine Thursday clouds and look at that by the weekend mid 60s. Of course, the 12th day of Christmas on Saturday, the epiphany and then 68 Sunday, Monday, 75 and a couple of showers. We'll be back. The value of X is reportedly down more than 70% since Elon Musk took over. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the value of X has reportedly plunged. According to Axios, Fidelity estimates the platform is worth 71% less than when Elon Musk bought it 15 months ago for $44 billion. Musk changed the name from Twitter, fired thousands of employees, and clashed with advertisers. Next, Meta is dropping the price of its Oculus Quest 2 virtual reality headset. It's been on sale for $250 for the last two months. Now the company is making that sale price permanent. And Chinese electric vehicle maker BYD says it produced 3 million new vehicles last year. That puts the company on track to outdo Tesla's production for a second straight year. As of the third quarter, Elon Musk's company was on pace to produce fewer than 2 million electric vehicles. Did you hear the one about the electric car that finished the race early? Yeah, it turns out it was a short circuit. Those are your tech bites. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. We'll take it. Time now, 528 and 47 degrees for now. Up next, we'll show you which San Antonio neighborhood is now dealing with an onslaught of wild hogs. Plus, how a new law is giving Texas homeowners and businesses some property tax relief. And ahead on GMSA at 6 today, we'll show you how a collaboration between the Alamo Colleges and a university in Mexico is opening new doors for students. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, January 2nd. That's right. Back to work, back to school. Well, maybe for the teachers, though, because I think some of the students start on Wednesday. Oh, they're not all back. So, not, not everybody. Okay. Yeah, not everybody. It's kind of scattered. Well, I did warm up the bus anyway, and that's going to be coming up a little bit later on. <laughs> so. some, yeah, for some kiddos. Yeah. But uh, one thing, if you are heading off to school or and heading off to work this morning, take a little rain jacket with you. You need a, a light jacket. It's not bone chilling cold out there, but just kind of cool enough. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. Temperature right now stands at uh, 47 degrees, and we are going to then see throughout the day. Take the graphic. There we go. And uh, 37 is the uh, the dew point temperature. So a little bit of extra moisture in the atmosphere. Wind out of the northeast at eight miles per hour. And like I said, with those clouds out there, very consistent temperatures right now. So uh, we're not going to be also moving that much from where we are at this point, just because of that cloud cover, kind of acting like an insulation blanket. We're hovering the near five to six degrees above normal, but also the clouds are going to prevent a big warm up out there. Plus we have some of that rain mountain cedar. Wow. I mean, if you're sneezing, sniffling, here's the reason why 23,800 very, very high mold is on the low side. I don't know if we're going to be getting market asked this question last half hour for rain's going to help to wash some of that out. It's not going to be a real heavy, consistent rain. I think anything will help a little bit, but uh, yeah, and we're just getting into the throes of the season. Temperatures aren't going to be moving throughout the day. We'll gain a handful of degrees. If that with a few more scattered showers, we'll see a couple of them developing later on this morning and then kind of picking up throughout the late afternoon dinner time as well as this evening and and then starting to taper off. Stays cool the next couple of days. Another couple of rain chances down the road as well. That and a look ahead to the first weekend of the new year. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Anything going on, RJ? All right, Mike. Yeah, things starting to pick up a little bit. Kind of figure as we get closer to our 6 o'clock hour that uh, we might get more people on the roadways right now as we take a look at that Tower of America shot there. I-10 and Callahan West traffic moving pretty smooth in both directions there. Uh, there was a couple of crashes reported overnight in that area near Balcones Heights and Castle Hills, but that has been uh, cleared out, so that's good news there. Uh, we do have a report of a crash, and actually uh, this is being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department of a crash and a car fire, so TxDOT's not reporting this because I believe this is off the highway, but our maps are indicating that this is right there at 35 at Ritterman Road. So if you're headed out in the near northeast side, obviously Ritterman Road is a pretty important stretch of road there for a lot of people in that area. Rest of the city, things looking pretty good. Again, a little bit of a slower start as people kind of get back into the routine. Again, the grind, get back to work later this morning. So we do expect things to kind of pick up a little bit here as we get through our 530 hour. You can see right there, if you had to head out, head out right now, uh, right now, definitely be a good time. Maybe grab some coffee, get things ready to go to start your work week. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. 
Thank you, RJ. San Antonio police are looking for someone who turned a car crash into anything but an accident. They say that person shot the driver involved in the crash. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where investigators are trying to sort it all out. Now, Katrina, we understand the man who was shot was seriously wounded. That's right. Police told us he was in critical condition after being shot in the chest. What it seems they don't know at this point is exactly what led to the shooting. But based on what officers told us at the scene, this started with a single car crash. They say a pickup crashed into a tree and fence after the driver took a turn too fast. This happened on a street called Terran Road. It's near Roland Avenue, not far from Rigsby. Police say they got a call about the crash after 9.30 last night, but before they arrived, someone drove up, argued with the driver involved in the crash, then shot him in the chest. Now, that shooter took off. Police say the only description they had is that that person was in a black or dark colored Dodge Durango. And again, the man who was shot is still in the hospital in critical condition. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Folks living in one Bear County neighborhood are keeping a close eye on their yards after a pack of wild hogs rooted up several lawns over the weekend. Check this out. About 10 feral hogs captured on camera foraging for food and damaging people's yards. This happened in a neighborhood about three miles south of SeaWorld. This is the second time in a few weeks that the hogs have left their mark in the neighborhood. In both instances, the targeted homes are located near wooded areas on the edge of the subdivision. Well, this morning, at least 30 people are dead after a powerful earthquake struck Japan on New Year's Day. Now, experts warn dangerous aftershocks could last for months. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, they say the situation could get even worse before it gets better. The word going forward is to be cautious and, and be ready to evacuate again. The death toll is climbing and dozens are injured after yesterday's earthquake on Japan's west coast. Experts say the situation is still perilous. Overconfidence is one, one danger. It's almost impossible to predict exactly how many aftershocks they're going to be and when. For an earthquake of this size, um, about a magnitude 7.5, we would indeed expect the aftershock sequence to go on for days, weeks, even months. Those warnings come amid the continued search for people trapped in the rubble. The bodies are still being recovered from the rubble and the accident is not over. The good news is the immediate risk of tsunamis is over and there was a nuclear power plant there. It was shut down before the earthquake took place. That's a relief since a 2011 earthquake and tsunami caused a meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant. But it's a relief that could be short lived. There is a small chance, um, but a non-zero chance, that we might actually see an earthquake larger than that initial shock. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Someone in Michigan is kicking off the new year as a mega millionaire. A single ticket in Michigan matched all numbers for last night's Powerball drawing worth $842 million. This is the fifth largest Powerball jackpot and the tenth largest U.S. lottery jackpot ever won. The cash value is an estimated $425 million. There were also six winning tickets that matched the five white balls. One of those was sold in Laredo and is valued at $2 million. Disney's copyright protection for an early version of Mickey Mouse expired New Year's Day and is now in the public domain. Anyone can now use the version of Mickey shown in this movie, 1928's Steamboat Willie. U.S. copyright law, which Congress updated in 1998, allows a copyright to be held for 95 years. The copyright expiration could mean we'll start seeing more of Mickey, but only that 28 version of the famous mouse. More modern versions will remain unaffected and are still protected by Disney's copyright, and you bet they will. Uh, there are still several differences between the Steamboat Willie Mickey and today's version. The 1928 version lacks the current Mickey's gloves and oversized shoes and his eyes are small, black ovals without pupils. Mike, do you remember when that came out, Steamboat Willie? Nothing, <laughs> no? I wish you could see his face right now. I know you weren't around in 1920. <laughs> it was just 10 years later when Mike was blessed. I just can't. <laughs> oh 539, 47 degrees. Up next, we're gonna run down the new laws in Texas that are now in effect for the start of the new year. I had to get in one zinger <laughs> since we're in a new year, Michael. Outside with Lycam, he's talking about rain in our forecast.
I could have started yeah. the new year the other way. Without Zoom. Well, that would be yeah. highly unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> A new year means new Texas laws. Those include key tax code revisions and several education-related measures. RJ Marquez breaks down some of these new laws that are now in effect. A new slate of Texas laws are now in effect after last summer's legislative session. One of the biggest changes is for programs that focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. The state will no longer allow public colleges and universities to have DEI offices. Schools will not have to do DEI training, and employees who worked in those offices were reassigned. Texans United for DEI released a statement that said the absence of these offices creates, quote, avoid in addressing systemic inequalities and fostering an inclusive learning environment for all students. Up next, property tax relief. Texas homeowners and businesses will potentially get thousands of dollars cut from their property tax bills. The $18 billion property tax cut package lowers school district property taxes, which makes up a large share of a landowner's bill. School districts will get just over $7 billion to lower those rates. Another new law cracks down on vaping and e-cigarettes for minors. Businesses can no longer use cartoon characters, celebrities, or images of candy in their marketing to sell e-cigarettes to young teens. It will now be a Class B misdemeanor if they are caught using these types of promotions. And there's a change for minors charged with Class C misdemeanors. A new law now lets minors who are charged with crimes like petty theft or alcohol possession to enroll in diversion plans instead of being fined. And finally, HOAs. Property owners associations must now have a formal and transparent policy on how they give fines and other violations to owners. HOAs will have to send each property owner a copy of their policies and post them online. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Hey, RJ. Hey, thanks for your story. <laughs> 544, 47 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguy looking over at I-35 at Space Center. Things are moving right now. Looking good so far this morning. Also at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. RJ Marcus, who's very busy all the time. We're going to be checking in with him very soon. Welcome back. It's 548 and uh, taking you outside trans guy traffic cameras. Things looking pretty good to start your work week. If you're just going to get back into the mix uh, after what was a, hopefully a good uh, holiday break for you or a good New Year's Eve weekend. Taking a look at 281 the quarry. We got traffic moving pretty good in that area there. 98 Journal McMullen on the near west side traffic moving pretty smooth there as well. Obviously that's always kind of a little bit of a trouble spot. So it's good to see that we are getting things moving here. I uh, got this confirmed. This was a crash. It is off of uh, the highway though again and that's Actually, right there, we're 35 and 410 kind of um, kind of sort of intersect with one another there. So this is off the highway. Again, it was reported as a car fire, uh, not causing any major delays right there at Riddiman Road and Goldfield. So uh, that's some good news there for our drivers in the near northeast side. If you are headed into town right now, uh, things looking pretty good. As we mentioned, a lot of green here on our screen. We have uh, 40 minutes for people coming in from Lavernia. That's usually a little bit of a delay there. But uh, again, if you saw that shot earlier from 90 Journal McMullen, if you're coming in from Castorville, generally pretty good uh, traffic times right now if you need to uh, maybe head into the city of San Antonio. But again, traffic looking pretty good out there, guys. 37 Hackberry, Loop 410, Blanco Road. Um, traffic moving along pretty smooth. So that's good news for our drivers headed out to uh, start their work week. I started my work week yesterday as we saw that. <laughs> so I got that first day out of the way. Thank you for leading the way for oh, us, RJ. Yes. You <laughs> trailblazer. You. Great job. Yes. So awesome at job. least this week you're going to be able to realize what day it is instead yeah, of the rest yeah, of the yeah, exactly, exactly. We're going to be off this is all week. Tuesday, <laughs> yes. yes. Tuesday. So. Yeah. Uh, you were talking earlier about living downtown and seeing yeah, the, the aftermath. Fireworks. Does it look yeah. like this? Incredible stuff. Take a look at the picture right here. Oh. I saw that too driving around. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. Just With like a cloud of haze over the. <laughs> I know. I'm going gonna, gonna to have to tell Luis he was right because we were driving around. He was like, oh, look at all the whatever dust from the fireworks. I was like, no, it's that's fog. <laughs> so we were going back and forth and well, there you go. Did you hear that? She's going to tell her husband he was right. He was. It's a new I'm year. It's a Mike. new year. <laughs> 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 what a pretty picture. Uh, let's change the subject. Yes, uh, there is all the, the kind of the, the smoke left over, I guess, from all the fireworks downtown. It was a pretty fireworks display, though. Now, this is not anything except clouds out there. We don't have any rain showing up on radar right now. Uh, but we will see some showers developing later on this morning and then especially later on this afternoon. Temperatures, we're in the mid upper 40s and really thermometer is not going to be getting any sort of a workout throughout the day. We may fluctuate and gain a couple of degrees here and there over the course of the day, but rain chances will begin to pick up a little bit more. It's not like it's going to be raining constantly. 
or everywhere, but it'll just be a little more widespread as we go into the late afternoon hours. We're going to top off at 50. If indeed we do make it up to 50 degrees later on today, here's what the uh, computer models indicate. Again, a few showers developing, especially off to the west later on this morning and toward the end of the morning commute and then by mid to late morning noon a few more of these showers scattered about the area and then as we go into the afternoon hours they become a little bit more like I said widespread even a couple of decent showers here and there and this is going to be the situation through dinner time and then also into the evening hours then by later on tonight it's going to start to kind of work its way off to the east of us all right here's what the upper level winds are doing we've got this trough out here to the west of us this is the one moving across here giving us this rain chance so that moves on out we get a little bit of a break in the action then tomorrow as well as on Thursday the next low is going to work its way in our direction problem is though it looks like and this seems to be what we've been putting up with or having to deal with the past couple of times we've had rain chances around here. This thing's going to stay a little too far to the north. It will give us a chance of rain on Friday. If it would move down right on top of us, that'd be much, much better as far as rain chances. So yes, there will be a couple of showers. We take anything, of course, we can get, but it's not going to be a huge rain event again on Friday. We get a little bit of some milder air coming in here for the weekend. Then another low is going to develop, and that's going to work its way down in our direction to give us another chance of rain once we go into the first part of the week. Now, ahead of this thing coming on through here, it is looking like we are going to be seeing uh, pretty good warm up. We get into the mid and even upper 60s above normal for the weekend and then even hotter on Monday. Then temperatures are going to be dropping down in behind that. So this is what it looks like with little pictures and numbers on the graphic. 50 today, 60 tomorrow as well as Thursday. So tomorrow's or today's going to be just one of those damp kind of chilly sort of days and then some sunshine tomorrow early Thursday more clouds next chance of rain Friday weekend looks pretty nice if you are going to take down or waiting to take down the decorations until the 6th it's gonna be pretty good weather for it on Saturday that's good news we mm -hmm. need to take those decorations down it is because that's what I'll be doing on Saturday we will do that as well Thank you, Mike. 553, 47 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3777, seven, seven, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 9960, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 8, 19, 20, 21, 28. Texas 2 step, 8, 11, 22, 32. Bonus ball 16, and somebody won Powerball last night up in the state of Michigan. The numbers were 12, 21, 42, 44, 49. Powerball won, power play three. The jackpot has now dropped back down to $20 million. Good morning. Coming up, the latest on a possible terror attack outside a crowded concert venue in New York. The investigation is underway, and we're live there this morning. Also, the latest on some news breaking overnight, a fiery collision on a tarmac when a passenger plane with 400 people on board goes up in flames after the big post-holiday travel rush. Plus, the new baby formula recall. What parents need to know, that's coming up right here on GMA. The start of the new year means there's so much to look forward to around San Antonio entertainment wise. In just a few weeks, the Alamo City will host one of the largest MLK marches in the country. Then Cowboy Breakfast makes its return with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo kicking off soon afterwards. And then it's not too far off is Fiesta 2024. For a full list of what's coming up this new year, head on over to KSAT.com. A new partnership with Alamo Colleges and a university in Mexico is opening doors for nurses, creating new possibilities for those seeking medical help. We have an inside look coming up. And bowl game season is in the books, but for the Longhorns, it's over. We have your game highlights from the upset between the Longhorns and the Washington Huskies after the break. And taking a look at Transkai 281 at San Pedro, things look good. Rain is in the forecast, so this evening's commute might look completely different. And we are frozen 
on our animation. The good news, it's go. not freezing outside. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. It is Tuesday, January 2nd. And thanks for joining us. We hope you had a great start to 2024. The weather was nice. It was very mild out there. Lots of fireworks. But here we jump back into the grind for a lot of folks. And Mike goes trade. We say Happy New Year to you. How are things looking this morning? Uh, not bad. On the, the coolish side, not cold jacket weather. And then make sure it's kind of a, a rain jacket because we don't have any any showers in around town right now. A couple little sprinkles out to the west showing up on radar, but we'll see more rain developing throughout the course of the day. So again, dry here in town. This is a look at radar. And this is from the Del Rio radar site. And as you can see, just a couple little spots over here, maybe just to the west of Hondo, a few in and around Uvalde, Concan, and further on out to the west. And this will continue to sort of grow a little bit this morning and then work its way to the east as the uh, as the morning rolls into the afternoon and especially this afternoon we'll see a few more showers out there consistent temperatures mid 40s normal low is 41 so everybody is a few degrees above that and we're not really going to move all that much throughout the day Mountain cedar, if you've been sneezing, sniffling, well, that's a good reason why. 23,800 and molds on the low side, at least. The updated count is going to come out in a couple of hours later on this morning. Temperatures, like I said, aren't going to be moving really at all throughout the day for all intents and purposes. We will have a little bit better rain chances picking up as the day rolls on into the afternoon. And a high temperature, if indeed we do make it up to 50 later on today, and it's going to be sort of that uh, damp kind of chill out there. Good grilled cheese and soup sort of a day. Stays cool the next couple of days. Today is the only chance of rain early on in the week, but then to finish up the week, we have another rain chance. Take a look ahead to that and the upcoming weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez behind the wheel. What's going on, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good morning, Mike, and good morning to all of our viewers out there as we take you outside here. Trans Guide traffic cameras, you see traffic moving pretty good throughout the entire city of San Antonio. A lot of people may be getting up right now, getting back to work uh, after after this, uh, after hopefully what was a good holiday break for you for everyone out there. So I-35 Southwest military traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. Same here at 37 at Jones Avenue. We have a couple of smaller things kind of popping up now on our maps. We're looking here at uh, Palo Alto College. So the Southwest kind of South side uh, highway 16 at Campari Lane. There was a report of a crash also uh, may have also been reported as a vehicle fire as well. Again, this has been something uh, reported by San Antonio Fire Department. Going to take you all the way to northeast side here as we have a report of a stalled vehicle on the northbound lanes of I-35 at Cibolo Creek. So for any of our drivers that are headed up, uh, maybe you're going to go up to uh, New Braunfels or Shirts, kind of that whole area. Just keep this in mind. We have a stalled vehicle. Doesn't appear to be causing any major delays at the moment. One more uh, crash being reported right now. This is off the highway there on the near northeast side on Eisenhower Road. So again, starting to see just a lot of sort of little things pop up as more people get out on the roadways. Again, getting back to work uh, to start your work week out there. Loop 410 there at Cherry Ridge. Traffic moving pretty good in that area. We did have a crash there earlier earlier this morning, but we do see smooth sailing out there right now. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, a crash leading to a shooting on the street. San Antonio police say it happened around 930 last night in the 4100 block of Tehran Road. That's on the city's east side near Roland Avenue. Police say a man was driving his truck too fast around a curb when he crashed into a fence and tree. Police tell us that's when someone in a black SUV pulled up to the crash and started arguing with the driver and the passenger in the truck. Police say when the SUV driver heard sirens, he then shot the driver of the truck in the chest, got back in his vehicle and drove off. The victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. In your Texas headlines, lawmakers returning to Capitol Hill with a list of pressing items, one of them being the overflow of migrants down at the border. Preliminary numbers from the government show record migration for the month of December. According to the Department of Homeland Security, border authorities encountered more than 225,000 migrants along the border just last month alone. Governor Abbott says Texas can't handle the surge, so he's sending those migrants to big cities like Denver and Chicago. They're being told that they are in the city of Chicago, literally dropped off um, in the middle of nowhere. Um, I find that to be inhumane and unconscionable. Likely, uh, we will see more Indian people Congress. die as a result of the inability of governments to really address the humanitarian needs. In Congress, both parties say they want to address the border crisis, but Republicans say it has to come first over any other policy discussions. A new year means new Texas laws. That's right. A new slate of Texas laws now in effect after last summer's legislative session. 
One of the biggest changes is for programs that focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. The state will no longer allow public colleges and universities to have DEI offices. Another change has to do with property tax relief. Texas homeowners and businesses will potentially get thousands of dollars cut from their property tax bills. The $18 billion property tax cut package lowers school district property taxes, which makes up a large share of landowners' bills. Another new law cracks down on vaping for minors. Businesses can no longer use cartoon characters, celebrities, or images of candy in their marketing to sell e-cigarettes. It will not be a Class B misdemeanor if they're caught. And finally, HOAs, Property Owners Association, must now have a transparent policy on how they give violations to owners. HOAs will have to send each property owner a copy of their policies and post them online. The Texas Longhorns could not get the big finish they needed last night against the Washington Huskies in the Sugar Bowl. Huskies managed to hold on for a final score 37-31. Washington's quarterback Michael Penix Jr. put on a historic performance throwing for 430 yards. Now the Huskies will face off against the Michigan Wolverines to see who will reign supreme. The 2024 college football playoffs national championship game will be played Monday, January 8th in Houston kickoff is at 6.30 p.m. Out to Pasadena we go for the beautiful Rose Bowl semifinal game. Number one, Michigan Wolverines taking on number four, Alabama Crimson Tide. And the Tide would come out roaring, handing off to Jace McClellan, who jukes a defender in an open space, and he's gone, taking it in for the 34-yard touchdown run. Michigan would answer with a touchdown, and then J.J. McCarthy finds Tyler Morris over the middle. Morris can move, tiptoeing down the sideline, hitting the pylon on the way in. Wolverines fired up, but on the extra point kick, the snap is fumbled and it remains a six point game. That would be crucial later because the Tide would retake the lead with another McClellan touchdown and go up by seven in the fourth thanks to a field goal. Michigan came right back as McCarthy finds Roman Wilson, who trots in to tie it at 20. This game would go into overtime, and Michigan got the ball first. Wolverines go to the ground with Blake Corum, who will not go down. A 17 yard touchdown to put the pressure on Bama. Fourth and goal from the three, low snap Jalen Milrow gets tripped up by his own offensive lineman as the Wolverines defense holds on to win at 27-20, the final, and Michigan linebacker Junior Colson shared what happened on that last play. We're playing cover zero, you know, uh... You know, coach was telling us, you know, all the time, like, you know, this is the moment we were built for. This is the moment where, we're, you know, we can come out here and play for. And uh, we knew exactly what was going to happen. You know, it's like when, when the moments get tough, who, who you go to? You always go to your best player. And they went to their best player. And when we were right there to stop it, you know. So we were just we sent the house. You know, like I said, it's fourth down. It's one last play. Everybody strained. Everybody strained to the ball. Spring football in San Antonio here to stay. The XFL Brahmas will play their second season at the Alamo Dome after a merger with the USFL. And the XFL created the United Football League, or UFL. The Brahmas are one of the four XFL teams that made the merger along with four USFL teams. They'll be split into two conferences. And the Brahmas have a new head coach, former Cowboys head coach Wade Phillips, who will be taking the reins here. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his ex-wife and UFL partner Danny Garcia will still be a part of the organization as co-owners. And Brahmas fans, stay ready because tickets are going on sale soon. Well, after a rough game with the Boston Celtics, the Spurs back in action tonight up in Memphis taking on the Grizzlies. Tip off set for 7 p.m. Spurs will look to avoid a three game losing streak. Thursday, the Spurs return home to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. <laughs> Time now 609 and 47 degrees for now. X is reportedly down over 70 percent since Elon Musk bought it. We're going to see what experts are saying on how this happened. And after enjoying that celebratory bowl of black eyed peas or a menudo, resolutions have been made. What some of you are hoping to accomplish in this new year coming up. Uh, resolutions. I didn't I didn't make one again this year. What about you, Mark? Nope. Nope. Anti-resolution <laughs> here on the desk. <laughs> 47 degrees out there. We'll be right back. <laughs>